In this video, we're going to take an existing vSphere cluster that's configured with vSphere configuration profiles. We're going to make a configuration change. We're going to do that on one host, and we're going to see how we apply that configuration change to the rest of the hosts in the cluster. Now, we've already configured ESX1 with a new VM kernel port. So let's just take a quick look at that. We've added VMK3. It's attached to a vSAN port group, and it's enabled for the vSAN services. So if we check the virtual switches, we'll also see a vSAN port group there. So that's the configuration change that we want to apply to all the hosts in the cluster. So how are we going to do that? First, we'll navigate to our cluster configuration desired state. Now let's just check compliance against the current cluster configuration document. We're going to expect to see ESX1 be non-compliant with the current cluster configuration spec. So as expected, the host has a port group and a VM kernel NIC configured. The cluster value does not have those configured. It is not aware of the new configuration change. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll export the full cluster configuration document. And we'll also extract the configuration from a reference host, being ESX1, the host that we've added the new VM kernel interface to. So we'll download both of those. So let's just rename these just for ease of use. Say cluster settings and host 01. So let's open up both of these. So if we look at host 01's settings, we can minimize some of these, um, like VM kernel. Now, looking at VMK NIX, we see VMK0, VMK2, VMK0, 1, 2, and we have our new one, VMK3. And the settings. It's on the vSAN port group. It's enabled for vSAN services. So this is going to be a section that we're going to need to add to our cluster configuration document. In addition to that, because VM kernel interfaces are attached to specific port groups, we will also need to scroll down to the network uh, switches section and locate the vSAN port group section. And we can find that here. So this is also an aspect that we're going to need to add to our cluster configuration specification. So let's do the both of those things first. So scrolling back up, let's find our new VM kernel port, so VMK3. Let us copy this block and go to our cluster config settings and paste it after the last VM kernel interface that we currently have, which is VMK2. Add a comma, paste in the section. OK. Now we need to add in the port group information, and that is under the network switches section. So under network switches, vSwitch 0, we're using standard switch in this demo. And we'll find the vSAN port group. So again, we will copy that section go to our cluster configuration spec to the same section and after the last port group let's add a comma and paste in the vSAM port group so let's save the document there for now so we've added the cluster generic or the cluster agnostic settings for a new VM kernel port and a new uh, VM uh, virtual switch port group. Now, if we scroll down to the towards the bottom of host one's uh, configuration, we'll see that we have the unique IP address configuration for VM kernel three, which is our, our new port group, our new VM kernel interface. So we're, we're going to need to add this sort of a section to each of our hosts in the cluster. So let's make a copy of that. And we'll scroll down to our host specific sections here. 
So here's host one. So after VM, the last VM kernel port in our list, we'll add a comma and we paste in the IP address for VMK3. And we do that for each of the ESXi hosts in our cluster. So this particular section now is for host three, the IP address ends in three, add a comma, paste in, and don't forget to update the appropriate IP address. And we do this for each of the ESX hosts in our cluster. Let's validate that this JSON is syntactically correct. Okay, we have got valid JSON, so we're not going to hit any issues there. Say, make sure the file is saved. And we'll go back and we'll import this configuration now to our cluster. Import successful and a compliance check will be initiated. So now we see that host one is compliant. This would be expected. It has the new VM kernel port. We used it essentially as our reference. Host two, host three, and host four are missing their additional VM kernel port configuration. So we'll remediate the cluster. Can check the host level details and see the actions that are going to take place. And the new cluster configuration has been applied and we'll check one of our hosts here and we can see it has the new vSAM port group, the new VM kernel port group, and the same is true for all the other hosts in the cluster. So that concludes this video on making configuration changes and applying them cluster-wide using vSphere configuration profiles.